In this video, I'm gonna talk about the best Sony lenses that you can get for under $500. Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowen Photography. If this is your first time watching, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below to stay up to date on all of the awesome photography content I'm putting out. Now let's get to it. About six months ago, I published a video on the best Sony lenses for under $500 for your A6000. And I got a lot of great feedback on that video. So today I just wanted to do an update to that video per se, talk about a couple of other lenses that I didn't really talk about in the first video, and just give you my recommendations for what lenses you should get if you have a Sony A6000, Sony A6300, A6500, or any other APS-C Sony camera. So the first lens that I'm gonna talk about is my favorite lens and the one I always recommend to people when they're just getting beyond the kit lens and that's the 35 millimeter f1.8. Now this is a fantastic lens for pretty much everyday use. If you like shooting portraits or doing street photography, walking around, pretty much your everyday focal length, this is the best lens out there. And today it's about $400, so it's one of the pricier lenses on my list in this video, but I think it's totally worth the money. And if you can invest in one lens, I would say the 35 millimeter f1.8 is great. It's super, super incredible sharp like I said it's really great for portraits it's what I use pretty much every day and I shoot a lot of video stuff with it as well so my second recommendation is one that wasn't in the list on the last video and it's the Rokinon 12 millimeter f2 lens now this is a great lens if you like shooting super wide angle stuff. So with the 12 millimeter on the crop factor of the A6300, you're gonna get about an 18 millimeter field of view. So it's super wide angle. Uh, this is a manual focus lens, but with focus peaking and manual focus assist in the camera, it's very easy to nail tack sharp focus. And this lens is super great for doing like architecture stuff and cityscapes, and that's what I've really enjoyed it for. So again, this lens is also around $400. It's a little bit pricier. If you're not into shooting super wide angle scenes or landscapes, then this probably isn't a good option for you. But if that's the type of stuff that you wanna shoot and you're not afraid of manual focus, then I say go for this lens because there's nothing out there like it. So the third lens recommendation on my list is the Sigma 19 millimeter f2.8 lens. Now this is a good wide angle lens option. It's a little bit more of a normal focal length, closer to like 28 millimeters. And it's a good competitor or alternative to Sony's 20 millimeter f2.8 lens. Now I own the Sony 20 millimeter f2.8 and one of my friends has the Sigma 19 millimeter 2.8 and she shared some of the photos that she shot with it and she's gotten some really good results with it. I'm gonna be doing a full comparison of these two lenses in a video in the future. So there are a couple of differences between the 19 millimeter and the 20 millimeter. With the 19 millimeter, you're not gonna get quite as good autofocus because it's not a native Sony lens, it's a third party lens, but you also pay about $100 less for the lens. The Sigma costs to around $200 and the Sony 20 millimeter lens is closer to 300. So you can save $100 if you're willing to be a little bit more patient with the focus. And one thing to note about the 19 millimeter Sigma lens and the 20 millimeter Sony lens is that neither one of them have image stabilization. So if you're doing something like handheld video, you might end up with shaky footage. So the next lens recommendation and the last Sony one that I'm gonna give in this video is the one that's actually filming this video right now and that's the 50 millimeter F1.8. Now this is Sony's Nifty 50. It's a fantastically sharp lens. It's good for doing video work. I use it to record a lot of the videos here for my channel, the ones that I do in my apartment. And I also use it for portrait stuff. Now I prefer the 35 millimeter because it's got a little bit of a wider field of view. The 50 millimeter is a little bit tight. It's cropped in at around 75 millimeter equivalent on a full frame camera. So it's not really a great option for everyday walking around, but if you're shooting like headshots or portraits, that sort of thing, or you know, setting up YouTube videos in your apartment, uh, the 50 millimeter f1.8 can't be beat. Uh, you can get it for around $250, and the lens is totally worth it. It's fantastically sharp. So if your budget can only allow for around $200 to $250, I would recommend the 50 millimeter f1.8. One of the other great things about the mirrorless cameras and the Sony mirrorless system is that you can use an adapter and adapt cheaper lenses from other systems. 
So if you wanna use old vintage lenses, then you could get a pretty cheap adapter and put them on your A6300. So one of the lenses that I recommend in terms of vintage lenses is the Pentax 50 millimeter F1.4 Super Tacomer lens. So old manual focus lenses like this Pentax lens can be often found for around $200 or less. The Pentax lens in particular, I got mine for around $70 with a Pentax Spotmatic camera. So if you're looking around, you can find really cheap lenses and use manual focus on your Sony a6300 to get some really budget-friendly lenses if your budget is really tight. So if you're interested in seeing any of the lenses that I mentioned in this video, I've put links down in the description, and I've also linked up some honorable mentions uh, that did not make this video. So what's your favorite lens for the Sony a6300? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. So we'll see you soon, folks. This has been another episode of Damn Bowl Photography. Peace.